Um, so I, I'm trying to think about how, a way of introducing Charles, uh, which is difficult for me, because Carmina mentioned, uh, you know, he was a very pivotal figure for me in my own life. Uh, so it would be very easy for me to slip into what might be sound like hyperbole. But I can assure you of two things. Uh, I definitely will, uh, and it isn't. Um, uh, so he's met, Charles uh, Bernstein is best known as a poet, essayist, and professor of poetry. And as he's been fond of underlining in the past, he is a professor of poetry in that he professes poetry. He's the Donald T. Regan Professor of English and Comparative Literature, uh, where he co-founded as co-editor of Pen Sound with Al Filrys, uh, which is really, uh, I encourage you to check it out. It's a truly wonderful resource for anyone working in 20th and 21st century Anglophonic poetry. Uh, it has everything. I can't even begin to describe what it is. It's just immense. Um, he was previously the David Gray Chair of Poetry and Letters at SUNY Buffalo, uh, and was the director of the Poetics Program there, which he co-founded with Robert Creeley, Raymond Fetterman, Dennis Tedlock, and Susan Howe. At Buffalo, he co-founded the Electronic Poetry Center with Las Pequeño de Glacier, uh, which recently celebrated its 20th anniversary. It was an early web-based uh, resource for poetry and poetics, and, and remains so. Uh, in addition to the many publications and accomplishments of his career, Charles has regularly invited poets and performers into his classroom uh, to introduce students to the massive variety of poetry out there and the intense engagement of its practitioners. It's been his role as an organizer that I personally find has been his most impactful. So this is how I believe it is best to introduce him as a poetry community organizer. Uh, in my time as an undergraduate student in Buffalo in the late 1990s, uh, it seemed like everyone I knew was in some way engaged with poetry and performance, and the poetics program served as a centralized space for us to coordinate, network, and produce. In addition to the many people who went on to become academics teaching poetry and poetics, there were also many who went on to create their own networks and communal spaces. Uh, just thinking about my immediate circle of friends uh, that I met in that community and what they went on to do, uh, one is a general editor of a brand new arts and cultural circular periodical in Buffalo. Another teaches, uh, another's a high school librarian in Alabama who remains actively publishing and editing. Uh, the creator of a small press fair in Buffalo, and still another's a creator of a small press fair in Buffalo that provides an annual venue uh, and networking possibilities for dozens of small press publishers from all over the eastern U.S. and Canada seeking a broader audience. There's a fiction writer in Portland who hosts his own podcast for an organization that promotes book culture. A prolific poet and aspiring novelist who somehow found himself working on Wall Street. Uh, he's planning his escape, Eric Gelsinger. Yeah, 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 he's trying to get out. Uh, and a performer who opened his own black box theater in Baltimore and regularly tours multi performer shows that he writes and directs. And so all of them uh, were deeply impacted by the courses they took with Charles or Robert Creeley or Susan Howe uh, in a space that was carved out for them. It was more than having content to consume and be examined on. Uh, it pointed to a way of thinking and acting poetry as a whole way of life. Uh, beginning in the fall of 1997, in the three years that I had classes with Charles, and the extra year where I was generally lurking around, uh, working in a bookstore that sold the bookstore's courses, I mentioned this to you before, I count 126 different poets, performers, and or critics whose events I attended. 126 in a four years. Yeah. And this is just like, it's, we have the records. I don't know what I did with the 10 minutes after that. <laughs> <laughs> Planned your escape. Um, so this, all, this number uh, doesn't, uh, is not counting all the locally organized events created and hosted by people drawn in by the gravitational pull of the Poetics Program. So many small moments like spending my 21st birthday at an opening for Susan B, uh, who's here with us today at a graduate student's art space with Charles and Robert Creeley, uh, talking with Creeley at a cafe about his time with Jack Kerouac, uh, driving a rightfully concerned Harriet Mullen to the airport in my beat up Honda Civic so that I could selfishly talk to her about her work one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, seeing Robert Grenier's sentences for the first time, reading Steve McCaffrey's Boba for the first time, having Karen McCormick convince a bouncer to let my 19-year-old self into a pub just so I could hang out with Caroline Birdfall just a bit longer. And yeah, that was a fun night. Um, I didn't drink, I promise, kids. Uh, finding out that the largest collection of 20th century English language poetry in the U.S. outside of the Library of Congress was on my campus, and later getting a job there, and on and on. So I'm assuming that most of you uh, don't recognize many of those names. Uh, but that's kind of my point. 
their work is absolutely worth engaging, engaging with, and the sincere pleasure of discovery was something Charles and the Poetics program imparted upon me and many, many others. Uh, Charles writes that, to quote, to practice poetics is to acknowledge the inevitability of metaphor, the linguisticality uh, of perception, the boundedness of thought, the passion of ideas, the beauty of error, the chains of logic, the possibilities of intuition, and the uncanny delight of chance. Uh, I embrace the poetics of bewilderment. I don't know where I'm going and never have, I just try to grapple as best as I can with where I am. Indeed, it has a poetics and aesthetics without a predetermined theory. It is multi-forming, chaotic, always reformulating and regrouping. Competence is less important to me than responsiveness. Mobility, ingenuity, and invention are more important than solutions to predefined problems. So, some basic takeaways for me in this time. Uh, the politics of the word, we must mean what we say, sincerity. Uh, most of what your professors tell you about literature can be questioned and should be. Uh, books are machines. There's a lot more out there, and you could do a lot worse than read a lot of Louis Zakowski, which you probably won't do better. <laughs> uh, Charles is the author or editor of over 50 books. Uh, two of my favorite are Contents Dream, Essays 1975 to 1984, uh, In My Way, Speeches and Poems, and most recently, Recalculating, An Attack of the Difficult Poems, Essays and Invention. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, he edited with Bruce Andrews the seminal language magazine, or more accurately, L equals A equals N equals G equals U equals A equals G equals E. Um, well, no, it's, I prefer it. It's, it's, it's intentionally unpronounceable, I believe. Uh, his work has appeared in dozens of anthologies, over 600 magazines and periodicals. Over 500 essays and reviews have appeared on his work, and he's given over 600 talks or lectures all over the world. Uh, that's, that's sickening. That's a lot, those numbers. Um, in 2006, he was elected a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. And that, my question is what took them so long. Uh, his talk today is entitled The Pitch of Poetry, Moral Perfectionism, Occupy Wall Street, and the Poetics of Holocaust Representation. It is my sincere pleasure to welcome Charles Peter Bernstein here to Warsaw today.